Hey, what's up guys? My name is Gable. Welcome to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about how to do a 5.8 DBI antenna upgrade on your helium hotspot miner. I'm going to walk you through everything I'm doing, show you the little tips and tricks that I'm doing. I'm going to get on the roof. It's a little shaky up there sometimes, but uh, once you get used to it, you get used to it. Uh, if it's your first time doing it, please be very careful. Maybe you need to contract someone like me to do it, or maybe you need to contract someone else to do it. Uh, but again, safety is going to be your, your main concern here, guys. Please, everything I'm doing, don't do it if you don't feel comfortable doing it. So that being said, let's rock and roll. Let's get to it. I'm going to show you what I'm doing, and let's go. All right, so one of the first things I did is I went to the electrical aisle in Home Depot, and here you can have... A uh, bunch of different rods. There's a bunch of metal rods here that you can use. Here's a grounding rod if you need to create a grounding system. And then they have a bunch of different fittings. Um, so if you need to change the fitting angle or anything like that, you have a bunch of options here all in the same aisle in the electrical aisle. So super helpful. Um, you even have your conduit if you want to do some, uh, you know, protecting your cables underground or maybe even over uh, ground uh, against the walls. And even have some more uh, uh, little junction boxes here that you can use for outdoor enclosures. And if you need a bunch of wire, they also have it here. So I used one an old dish network antenna. I'm gonna restore this real quick and just jerry rig it. I'm going to uh, take off the base and uh, a lot of the bolts were actually stripped off. Um, but uh, these bolts are pretty rusted. So I went ahead and used this little thingy jiggy right here. And I tightened it down. And then I just got a little, um, little wrench and just took this off. There's a random dog. Hello dog, uh, that dog kind of scared me, not gonna lie. But um, yeah, so I'm taking this this little thing off and then uh, honestly, I want this bolt to go on nice and easily so I went ahead and grinded it down like this. Uh, it didn't take me too long. And then I use these little bolts here so I can um, mount this to the roof. So I'm just gonna put this in my pocket for now, but this is what I'm gonna use on the roof. I wanna make sure that obviously the, uh, the, the screw is wide enough so it wouldn't go through the holes. So I wrapped up the um, old antenna base that we had and I just put the clips on there. This is what comes with your antenna. And so I put it on there nice and tight so this pipe is not going anywhere. The pipe right here that I'm holding is about like five feet. So that wraps it up for the base. So now I'm going to um, use this grounding wire. You buy it off of Amazon for pretty cheap. And I'm going to make the grounding unit. I've already attached the, gr the grounding arrestor to the actual antenna and the cable. I've already taped it up. Uh, just one layer, nothing too serious yet. I'm just going to uh, fix this up. So it comes with a little clip here. It's sometimes a little complicated to use, especially if you don't have any crimpers. But you're supposed to uh, crimp the grounding wire inside of it uh, with these little tools here. Uh, these aren't the best tools. This is not the uh, actually the appropriate tools for this size. This is usually for uh, smaller uh, gauges. But um, yeah, so this wasn't really working out too well. I did get it to stick on there, but if you don't get it to stick on there, it's not a big deal. Uh, you can just go ahead and wrap it up in a different way. We've shown it differently in a different video, uh, but we got it to work out just well. I just didn't get the sleeve on there. I took it off so I can crimp it down. And uh, so put the screw on nice and tight because we don't want it to be loose and, and spinning around. Now that we've done that, you can go ahead and fix up the tape and just finish on the first layer of tape. I'll talk about this right now. This is vulcanizing tape. How you doing? The only reason why I'm not recording here is because I got this miner back here making a ton of noise. Um, but this is going to be vulcanizing tape. Uh, this is what we're going to put on the antenna to make it uh, seal proof. So if the first layer of tape is going to be clockwise, then you're going to want the vulcanizing tape, which is going to be the second layer of tape you put on. You want it to be the opposite. You're going to want it to be counterclockwise. And then when you finish that up, uh, you're going to want to go back over with just electrical tape. And you're going to back you're going to go back over again in clockwise. So Three layers of tape, right? They don't have to be super thick, but they have to be well put on. You're gonna do one layer of uh, electrical tape, clockwise. It doesn't really matter what direction you start. Uh, people say different things, but whatever. Um, we're gonna do clockwise, vulcanizing tape, counterclockwise, and then again, we're gonna do electrical tape, clockwise, okay? So uh, a lot of times people, uh, what I do specifically is I do, um, I start from top to bottom, and then I go to bottom to top, and then I do uh, top to bottom. All right, so it's, it's just about keeping water out. Uh, I'm not gonna get into full detail, but that's what we do a lot on, on the uh, antennas and connections. So, hope that helps. So, <laughs> this thing is like 10 feet tall. Uh, almost like 11, actually. So just a quick run through to show what I have. I'm doing power over ethernet. This is my splitter. So this is the other half of the setup. 
The other half is going to be connected right next to your router and I'm using a flat ethernet cable. This is what I use these for just about everything. It works great with windows and everything. And uh, first things first, right before you start making any holes to your enclosure that you have to seal up, make sure that you plan out how you're going to be connecting, where the cables are going to be being uh, fed from and through. Uh, because if you don't plan it out correctly, you will soon uh, come to realize that maybe it doesn't fit, uh, just like I did here. Um, I ended up using a bigger box, and this is going to damage my cable and my miner because uh, it was too tight and the hole didn't fit there. So once you figure that out, we have just about everything we need. Here is how you uh, take things up with you, right? So I need to take my drill with me. So I'm going to get this little loop. It's attached to my belt here. Uh, it's just any kind of string that you can find. Do this to it. <laughs> kind of make a little loop for it. You don't have to make any knots yet. And then just wrap it up and you make one simple loop. Pull it through and then you have a little hole here where you can just make an adjustable uh, loop or you can just feed your drill uh, right into that loop. So whatever you want to do works out. Uh, but you can use this for buckets or anything you need for tools. Um, it's super, super helpful when you're up there and you're climbing on top of the roof. And then you just kind of let it dangle. Um, it doesn't get in your way, so you'll be good. So I attached the antenna here to the side of the roof. Now let's make the climb up. I'm going to use both hands for this because uh, the, the sheet rock is a little bit slippery. All right, so I made it. I'm still alive for now. This behind the very top of this house and it's kind of windy and I'm wearing vans. Someone said that the vans are a good choice. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about that right now since I slipped twice and I didn't slip once when I was wearing my Converse. We'll see. So this is the grounding wire. Over there's the old antenna. Then we're going to use that exact same grounding system. I'm just going to toss that over there. So here I'm using a little bit of Loctite. I'm going to put this under the bolts and on top. So um, that way any water doesn't actually seep through the hole. Um, especially if uh, it starts to strip, you don't want any holes in there. So uh, just seal it all up nice and neat. That way nothing can go in. I actually sealed up the edges as well. But uh, honestly, you just need to seal up the bottom. If the hole is sealed, then you know you shouldn't have any drips, any drips anywhere. Uh, but you could definitely do a lot better job than this. I was just trying to hold the camera and demonstrate this. Uh, I went ahead and actually spread it out nice and evenly and uh, made sure that it was right in, in between where the screw was going to be uh, drilled into. All right, guys, so I forgot the bolts for this base. Um, I'm going to put it here. So I'll have another video on how to do that uh, specifically, just how to mount it uh, into your closure and how to run the cables into it. Uh, but I already have it here. I actually uh, just bagged it up overnight and it's been sitting here running for a couple nights. Um, don't worry about the angle and you're not going to damage anything, but I did completely wrap it up in an enclosure and I have a lot more witnesses now. Uh, it's been running for a couple days. I literally six times my earnings. Uh, so it's getting a little windy. I'm losing daylight. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to put it in the enclosure. I'm going to show you how I'm doing it. I'm not going to do it with the mount again. I'll have a different video for that. Uh, but soon it's going to get kind of windy. All right. As you're finishing up, make sure that this connection is good. You don't want it to be bad and then have to come all the way back up here. So make sure that's nice and tight. Wiggle it, jiggle it, do what you need to do. All right, so that's on. I'm about to plug in the power of Ethernet. I already have power coming through just because I'm, I'm just doing a little fi uh, quick fix up. For those of you wondering where am I getting power from, since I have the flat Ethernet cable, I'm super flexible. I have tons of options and so will you. Um, so I'm g running it straight through a window and uh, you can do that too with the flat ethernet but I'm going to eventually be drilling into the side of the house and making like a little uh, little outlet so uh, you have that option you can also go through the attic but just in case you're wondering I'm going through a window and I have 50 feet of cable and uh, I'm kind of running low so if you do something like mine on a two-story house where the router is like in the second story you might need 50 to 70 feet of cable listen if you're doing this and you already have power coming through here make sure that you plug in your antenna first before you plug in power you will you will mess this up up if you plug in power with no antenna so make sure you plug in antenna first antenna cable first before do power finally the dog stopped barking and also i put a little bit of uh silicone right here i'm doing this because i'm gonna keep the cable straight usually you want to uh, loop it so that way the the rain drips down off the loop but um, i don't want to do this right here and i'm kind of limited on cable length so um, i'm counting it real close uh, i got the green light already so that means we're good to go this thing is already making money uh but all right let's see what we can get all right so that's basically it i'm done i went ahead and taped up the actual uh antenna cable so i wrapped it up a lot and then I actually wrapped up the tape around the pole and the outside um, of the cable that's already wrapped up. So I did that for redundancy so that way water doesn't get in. Um, 
That way the water doesn't actually touch the actual cable as much and then um, any of the uh, the water is just gonna run off the outside. So um, it, a little bit of water might get in through here, which is perfectly okay for me because for one, this uh, grounding cable can act as a drip cable, so it'll just carry it down there. Uh, and then secondly, uh, the first cable is already wrapped up a lot. So like I said, this layer was just for redundancy, helping it uh, stick together and just keep a complete just watertight integrity the entire time. Um, that's basically it. I taped this to the pole so that way it doesn't swing around in the wind. Uh, you can use bungee cords, you can use um, these little brackets. And so uh, you can use these little brackets like this. Uh, they're like a dollar at Home Depot. They're the same electrical aisle. Uh, just go ahead and snap it onto the pole. There, it's on. And then you would just drill the actual holes in right here. Just screw it in. Make sure you, always, make sure you don't go through your bobcat, of course. Um, but I'm not gonna do that. I'll do this for a later video. And uh, that's basically it for the setup right here. Um, super simple, super easy. Just took a while. I would do as much of this drilling and anything in the enclosure downstairs, not on the actual rooftop. So, yeah. Now from the only angle that there is no tree, here it is. There she is. She's a beauty. She's standing up loud and proud. Look at her. She's going to get so many witnesses. Oh my goodness. This is great. All right, so let's take a quick look at the uh, hot spot real quick. And uh, I'm gonna look at the hot spot, see the angle, look at that. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Yo, how am I talking to this person over here? No way. This guy, I've never even heard of this city. There's no way. Wow, that's hilarious. Anyways, that is hilarious. Wow, that is, that's hilarious. Um, I did not expect that one actually. Okay, so Jesus. All right. <laughs> what the heck? That's not possible. Hold on, I have to measure this. 197 kilometers. Hey Google, how far is 197 kilometers in miles? 197 kilometers is equal to 122.41 miles. There's no way that is 122 that's hilarious okay that's that's gotta be glitch anyways all right <laughs> wow that's funny okay so i am 13 meters up so it's like 42 45 feet in the air uh which is pretty good there is literally almost nothing higher than me around me uh besides my tree uh, my tree is like 40 to 50, 55 feet tall, so 10 feet taller. Uh, but the signal goes just right through that. It's a thin, uh, thin. It's a thin pine tree. Uh, but look, look at these witnesses. I, I have a total of 32 witnesses right now. Recently, I had 36, but whatever. Um, in, the, in the last five days, I had 36 just a while ago, but whatever. So um, yeah, I'm talking to all these people here. <laughs> this is awesome. I love it. So guys, when you do an antenna upgrade like this and you get it high up there, you start talking to a lot of people. All right, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna save this for a later video. Uh, this is gonna be good. I'm gonna, this is gonna be good. So anyways, that's hilarious. All right guys, so that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. So listen, I'm gonna drop the links down below uh, for everything that I used. If that helps you in any way, please it helps me if you use those links. Uh, that being said, another thing, please be safe. I know I said this earlier in the beginning of the video, but um, I can't iterate it enough. There's times where things can get a little shaky, literally, and um, just please be safe. Uh, I would hate for some of you to get hurt if you're doing something like this. Um, but I understand, you know, we gotta do what we gotta do to make money, and, and that's that's what we do. Um, so if you are in the Houston area and you wanna contract me, just let me know. Uh, shoot me a comment down, and we can figure something out. I have two more installations coming out soon uh, to flagpole and another rooftop, so stick around for that, check out. Uh, check that out it's gonna be coming out really soon uh, the video is actually already made uh, and if you're following along with me then um, your installation shouldn't take you as long I'm kind of just figuring everything out as I go and kind of just trying to not jerry rig I'm trying to do everything appropriately uh, it's just so hard not to jerry rig things sometimes uh, but if you use the right tools and you, you you take your time and you prepare before you actually start doing things things go much better so I hope these videos actually help you out in your preparation plans um, so like I said if you're still planning on upgrading your hotspot and you don't know exactly what you're gonna do. Those videos are coming out. I'll give you some ideas so you can brainstorm how to uh, make your enclosure, how to uh, get your antenna higher because everyone's situation is different and I completely understand that. That's why I'm making these videos. And um, honestly, I'm, I'm having like a lot of, um, 
obstacles sometimes like i get the wrong cable length or um the power is just like little little tips and tricks here that can help out uh, that i wish i would have knew earlier but it's a learning process so i hope this helps you guys out a lot and um, i appreciate you guys feedback please drop comments down below of what i can do better um lastly i'm gonna post a separate video for the lightning arrestor setup every single person is going to have a different setup for the lightning arrestor but um it's the idea that's the same thing you either have a grounding unit like in the ground or you know something for your dish network antenna or you don't have a grounding unit and you're gonna have to make one um and if you're if you're pretty high up uh you you definitely need a grounding unit i mean you shouldn't um, you should not have your antenna without a grounding arrestor now let's say you're in an apartment complex and you're on a second floor and you put it on your balcony you'll be fine uh, but if you're like the highest thing around you or almost the highest thing around you and your antenna is like just in midair <laughs> catching static, you're going to need that a lightning uh, arrestor. So please invest in one of those. It's like 20 bucks. It'll save your four or $500 investment. Uh, you would hate to fry that antenna. Just because it won't get struck by lightning doesn't mean that static won't interfere with your miner. And static is, is not good for motherboards. So that being said, thank you so much for watching. That concludes today's ramble. Do me a favor, hit the like and subscribe for me, please. I would appreciate it. Uh, that being said, see you next time.